Hey guys, it's Kadroth again. So today we're going to go over another one of those types of guide videos. This one's going to center around carding. Now, it's not going to go super in-depth because there is a lot of nuance to the carding system in the game. It's a easy to understand but difficult to master type system. But I do want to cover the basics with you guys so that you guys can understand and make better choices when you're going through nodes. So I'm going to start out by showing each of you guys the individual card types, what they're good at, what they're bad at, and kind of just go through this with you. And on the screen, you guys can see a infographic here made by Mr. Bob Mosses, kind of summarizing each of the card types. We'll make this available in an imager album in the description below. So starting out with the quick card here, you guys can see a couple of commonalities across all the cards is depending on the slot you use the card in, it will always do more damage the later in the hand that you use it. But for the quick card here, it definitely has the least damage out of all the cards this is also one of the reasons that you almost never want to start with it as your lead card but we'll get into that in a second but it does generate at least a decent chunk of np gen as well as increased star generation and to talk a little bit about the star generation Third generation can be really good for trying to get you a crit on the next turn there, basically getting you into a good position for either killing or generating enough NP to get to your Noble Phantasm. This is one of the things that is kind of weak about Quick is the fact that star generation as your unique trait for the Quick card is able to be provided by other units out there in the world via skills, craft essences, or mystic codes or command codes. So it ends up getting offset by a lot of other factors in the game, and it's why Quick cards in combination with that low damage end up being treated as not a good lead card or in general one of the weaker cards out there that's not to say that you shouldn't ever use a quick card it can still be a really good card to use at certain times and in fact you guys can see that sometimes you just may have to hinge on your ability to generate stars and that may help you out on the following turn so it may be a reason to lead with a quick card even still and we'll kind of go through that later in the video the type chain bonus is when you're going to be forming three cards of the same type that is going to get Get you 10 stars for use on the following turn so that can be used to kind of get you to maybe where i find it to be is about 30 crit stars where you really begin to be able to see the possibility of getting crits and securing them for yourself anywhere upward from that you have a good chance below that you're often going to see your cards spreading it a little bit too thin and maybe it not landing where you want it to due to the star weights of things at play but quick can still be a very interesting card so don't sell it too short next up is going to be the arts card here now the arts card does a standard amounts of damage I would argue here at 100 120 and 140 it does the most NP generation out of any of the card types and that is what makes it really really solid but it has no modifiers for your star gen here this isn't to say and I see a lot of people getting confused by this that an arts card cannot generate a star it in fact can it just means that the factors at play that will cause it to generate stars are just going to be the hit counts the star gen buffs that may be out there in the comp or the servant's base star generation rate. So it's not gonna produce a lot of crit stars without some of those modifiers being enhanced, but it can still produce a crit star. So again, that's something I see a lot of people get confused by. It's lead card bonus makes it a really good thing to use a lot in that lead card slot because it's gonna increase the generation of the hand at play by 100%. That can be really, really solid for you in terms of either refunding after an MP or just trying to get to your NP in the first place. And then it's type chain when you have three of it is going to generate 20% in P gauge for each member who contributes to the chain. So if you have all three of your members contributing an arts card, all three members of the party there are going to get 20% charge for a total of 60% party charge. If you only had two contribute, maybe say two cards from one person or one card from another, you would only get 20 each still for those two, making it 40% for the party at that point. It's a really, really interesting and nuanced and amazing card. It's just one of those things where I think you're gonna see, depending on what you need, you may play it or another card. And lastly, we get to Buster. So Buster is the one everybody knows as the Smork card. It is going to be the one that's going to do the most damage by far. It has no latent NP gen on it. Now, again, this does not mean that it can't generate NP, but by itself, 
without an arts card as the lead card bonus it is not going to generate any so that is the reason that we put the asterisk in here just so that you guys understand that it does generate a standard amount of crit stars it's not going to be as good as quick but depending on the circumstances it may be all you have or it may be something to even rely upon if there's a lot of hit counts in a buster card and we'll kind of get into hit counts in a little bit as well the lead card bonus is just amazing for the buster card as it increases the overall damage of the play by 50 percent and this includes things like the extra card so again it's something that's really nice please don't be confused we covered this in the np video but the lead card bonuses for each of these cards do not impact noble phantasm damage or refund in the case of arts please understand that you can put it before a np but it's probably to help the cards after the np not the np itself and then the type chain for when you get three in a row adds flat damage based on the unit attack to all cards in the chain this is why with the lead card bonus and three of a kind you get such high damage numbers with buster 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 combos especially if it's all from the same unit because then the extra card is going to get a lot of scaling off of that as well well and now on screen you guys can see an adjusted card damage by lead card and position little graph here and this is just to kind of give you guys an idea of what buster kind of has an effect with here as you guys can see the flat out damage here of a buster lead is 200 percent but then you look and it starts really enhancing the later cards and you guys can see the effects here is you get 146 and 162 on quick and 170 and 190 percent on arts my goal here is to not bore you too much with the actual percentiles here but instead to make you realize look at what would have happened had you led with a arts or quick card here you guys can see for instance you'd have 96 percent versus 146 percent or 120 percent versus 170 percent here on the second card this is one of the reasons that starting with a buster card can really really increase damage output but that doesn't mean that you're going to do it all the time it's going to depend on what your goals are again maybe you want the star gen maybe you want the arts refund so that's going to be one of the reasons that you're really going to want to do this and again you guys can see look at the amount it cuts down here on the buster cards by leading with an arts or a quick instead now next up here you've got the actual depiction of the extra card damage in a brave chain if you're just doing any old brave chain again here leading with an arts it's going to be 200 or a quick 200 but if you lead with buster the extra card's going to do 300 damage Furthermore, if you guys get triple of any card type, you guys can see you get 350 here for quick and arts and then 525 for the extra card damage on a triple buster. Part of the reason is because both the lead card damage as well as the boost from triple buster increasing flat damage really makes that extra card take off with a triple buster. So next we're going to talk about how cards exist within the spectrum of the servants and their overall use and strategy behind them. Don't forget that there are things that enhance a servant's capabilities with their cards. It's why their cards will hit different. So things like, say, the writing trait, madness enhancement, or territory creation can actually impact a servant's performance with their various cards. There's this, there's skill buffs out there, there's mystic code abilities, there's command codes there's craft essences all of these can actually impact a servant's card performance and that can include things like the servant's np generation rate which again i'm probably gonna have to cover np gen in another video or star generation or not just their damage it's something to pay attention to and i'm not going to go too deep into the nuances of every individual servant because there's just not really any point it's like trying to memorize the entire encyclopedia instead i'm going to tell you that if you do care about it there will be a link provided below where somebody actually kind of did go through the actual card performance for not all servants in the game but i believe it was up to two years ago most of the servants that were available in the game at that point you can kind of see there's some interesting nuances like how say for instance she shows carding ability for np refund she's actually better with an arts buster buster chain due to the hit counts on her buster cards and that's interesting most people would think it would be an arts quick quick chain but it has to do with the fact that she she doesn't have the writing trait has to do with the fact that at that point if you're carding you probably don't have her quick up on and it has to do with the insane performance of her buster card so 
Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. So looking at Shisho here, you guys may be able to see that she has your standard 2B, 1A, 2Q type deck but the problem with her card performance here she's only got two hit quick and six hit buster so for this problem like we were talking about earlier the hit counts really come into play as do the traits but why what are hit counts and why do they matter so hit counts are a preset number of hits that each card has Taking she shows, for example, here at six hits, it doesn't mean that the distribution of the damage is going to be even between all the hits, but it does mean that the card will do a set amount of damage and the hit number will always be six hits. For the hits, basically the reason it's important is star gen and np gen are based off of the number of hits in a card so more hits on a card is always better it's something you always want it might not make it as clear for you on trying to eyeball it how much damage the card is doing but it's better for the overall performance of the card so to clarify a little bit more what i mean when i say performance if a targeted enemy has zero hp left after damage is considered from that hit then star generation and np generation is going to be increased by 50%. Not only for all subsequent hits, but also the hit that reduces it to zero HP is going to have a 50% increase to that star gen and NP gen. That's really good, and it's why you want more hit counts. More hit counts means that the moment that you hit zero is going to be way easier to catch, probably earliest as possible in the hit count amount there, and then all hits after that are going to increase the actual performance of the star gen and np gen and that's why more hit counts are really good they're going to increase the odds of you getting more overkill in fact in talking with bob about this we actually realized that overkill really just absolutely benefits arts cards they get so much more out of it because in most cases you don't care too much about the little bit of overkill that you're going to get from star gen but instead overkill with arts generation and np generation is going to be super important in a lot of circumstances so it's why you'll see us talk about that especially having a high hit count on your arts card can be a really really good thing now hopefully you guys have a little bit of a grasp of the mechanics behind carding and why it can be important and how you select them and why it's so nuanced and different between each individual servant instead i'd like to actually kind of go over with you guys some of the examples of the various carding possibilities and where you would use them and why so just spitballing with you here i'm going to cover kind of the quick card chains here first and Again, the triple quick chain is going to be used, obviously, to generate the most stars possible. You're going to get that 10 crit star bonus, and it will generate a decent chunk of NP for you as well as giving you all those crit stars. So that's going to be something that you're definitely going to want to do, especially if you can do it with one servant, because you're going to get the extra attack card damage there. And that's actually something I'll show in a later slide, too, with that broken down. Now, for the rest of these, I can honestly say that I don't really see us using lead card quick too often. It might be that you need to generate more stars. It might be that the target switching that you're trying to do with your cards is important. So maybe like, for instance, right here with the QQA chain, you might try to kill the first enemy with the two quick cards, generate both some NP, maybe some overcharge with that and get a lot of stars out. But then also at the same time, the third card hits a new target and generates arts for maybe that other servant or something in order to switch. It just depends on how you structure things. And remember, you can do two quick cards from one servant and then an arts card from another so that you get a decent chunk of overkill with that second quick card. But ultimately, I do find leading with the quick card to be rather weak and probably not your go-to here unless you need to generate stars. So it's why you're not going to see me talk about it too much. I often have played the QAQ deck sometimes, but that's where, hey, I still kind of need NP generation, but stars are of the utmost importance for that follow-up hand. Same thing possibly here, but I'm going to be dead honest with you when I say that this will not generate a lot of stars if you go QAA, so it's probably not going to be your go-to in any way, shape, or form. Some of these might only get used in a target switching environment or type of situation rather than say, oh yes, I want to do the most damage i want to do the most NP gen that sort of thing it might be your way of switching between the targets and getting the most overkill and NP refund that you possibly can so let's go ahead and cover the arts leads here now as you guys can see the obvious choice here is going to be triple arts that's going to generate you 20 percent for every person used in that chain 
or in a brave chain is really going to help skyrocket that one units in p generation so it can be really nice it can also do a little bit of extra damage if you manage to brave chain for the extra attack so it can be a really really solid setup of cards to use otherwise i think you guys will also see aqq a lot that's going to generate a good chunk of noble phantasm for you because it's maybe not as good as obviously triple arts but maybe you just don't have the cards in your hand at that moment to be able to play that so instead you do aqq to try and generate as much as possible same thing with aqa that's going to be a different story right there and then aqb is probably only going to be used when yes you need to generate rate NP but you also need to hit hard right there at the end and so that might be a thing but I would almost say don't use it this way unless you just absolutely are confident in the performance of that buster card there at the end maybe it has high hit count or something otherwise you might want to invert it and instead go for a buster card lead with the arts card last generating you a lot more it's just going to depend and it's also going to depend on whether or not you can achieve overkill overkill might actually swing this in favor of the buster card versus leading with the arts card now to round this one up yes i do see abq being used a lot i do see aba being used a lot and again like we talked about and say she shows circumstance abb actually generates more than aqq does unless she has her steroid on so that's a interesting thing certain servants might do better with one outcome than the other and that's why this is so nuanced and hard to cover okay so now lastly here we're going to cover the buster cards obviously triple buster is going to be your go-to type smork situation where you got to do the most damage and it needs to die now <laughs> just kind of coming up the chain here maybe for buster buster arts here you do this because you're confident that the first two cards are going to kill and then you're going to get the most possible overkill with that arts card but i would say do this versus arts buster buster if the buster cards don't have good performance maybe have one hit count or something like that rather than six for she show or something that might be the scenario that you want to play that and maybe it's a really good arts card or something like that again that's something to also consider there with the fact that your lead quick card your lead arts card do 80 and 100 respectively but maybe if you have 25 percent or more for a buff on the quick card you might want to go with the quick card because it might actually end up out damaging the arts card in certain circumstances but that just is going to depend on strategically whether or not you need np refund strategically whether or not you need damage whatever i see buster arts buster used a lot for when you just didn't get the triple buster combo it's going to be your next best damage dealing option obviously buster arts arts might be hey the buster card kills and then you get the overkill with both the arts cards but you might actually be better doing aba instead of baa it just depends i'm gonna say that buster arts quick is gonna be your go-to for yes i need damage but i would also like to get the most crit stars i can buster quick arts is gonna be your go-to for hey i need to do a lot of damage but i want the most np refund that i can get as well that's gonna be your go-to for those and then last but not least here is probably going to be the buster quick quick combo there yes again i need it dead but i need to generate as many stars as i can for the next turn that's going to be kind of the nuances of using the buster cards here and again there will be some other slides here in the imager album that will kind of show it here's the various card options sorted by their overall damage output and then here as well with the extra card damage included in so again you guys can see something like say triple arts at 660 percent overall damage here is great but it's still almost never going to exceed anything that leads with the buster card it's something to keep in mind and it's something that can help you choose how to better play your cards in the long run okay guys i hope you enjoyed this one it was a fun one to make it just it was one i knew we needed to cover because this is something that again has a lot of nuance to it so uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see me make next. I obviously have some ideas, but maybe if you guys ask for one uh, enough, I'll, you know, kind of push that forward in the order. But uh, as always, guys, feel free to uh, join us on Twitch where I stream nightly, FGO at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And feel free to join the Discord if you guys have questions or just want to join a great community for FGO make sure that you assign a role otherwise the server kicks you so i'll put the link in the description below and i'll see you guys for the next one have a good day